Hey, I'm Allie, and Blackmagic recently released the beta version of DaVinci Resolve 17. So in this video, we're going to look at the top new features and updates in the free version. Let's hop in there. Okay, so first I want to say, with DaVinci Resolve 17's beta version, be sure to save your project often, because it's a bit glitchy and it has crashed on me a few times. So let's start out in the edit tab. And the first new feature we're going to check out is one of my favorites. It's called hover scrubbing. To check it out, let's make sure our effect library is open by clicking on it. So now when we hover and scrub over any of these effects, we can see what they would look like on our footage without actually having to apply them to our footage. And all these effects continue. If you scroll down, as you can see, we have shapes that can be created as a transition, tons of different wipes fusion transitions, and more, all that you can check out before applying it to your footage just by hover scrubbing. And if for some reason you didn't want to see hover scrub, you could click on these three dots here, click on hover scrub preview so that it no longer has the check mark beside it. And now as you scrub over any of these effects, you're no longer going to see that preview. I actually like hover scrub a lot, so I'm going to turn that back on by clicking it and making sure it's check marked. Okay, so the next cool new feature we're going to look at is going to take our footage and put it in text. Let's go over to our effects library and we're looking at titles here. So we'll, again, when you hover over these titles, you'll be able to see a preview of what they look like. I'm going to go to fusion titles and I like center reveal. In fact, I really like center reveal. So I can click on this star here, which favorites this fusion title. You can see that here. And now I'll be able to easily access it if I want to use it again in another project. Okay, so let's drag center reveal on top of our car clip and I'm going to drag the Lotus clip over top of the text layer here. Okay, so we'll select the center reveal text and in the inspector panel under video title, let's change the sample text to Lotus. Okay, next thing we can do is go over to the font drop down menu and as we hover over these different font types, you can see what they'll look like before selecting the font you want to use, which is another new awesome and very efficient feature. I like the Proxima Nova font because it's a thicker font. So it's going to show more of the footage once we put the footage in it. And so we'll select it. Now let's bring the size of this text way up to around 0.35. Yeah, that's looking good. Click on the settings tab and where it says composite in the composite mode drop down menu, choose alpha. Great. So it's not looking cool yet, but it's about to. Next, let's take the Lotus car footage and drag it on top of the text layer. I'll just select both of these assets and drag them onto the V1 and V2 track for my own organizational purposes. And with the footage selected on our timeline, let's go into composite again, click on the composite drop down menu again, and now choose foreground. And there we go. We now have our footage inside our text. We can also make some adjustments to how our footage shows by going up to the transform tab. So we could zoom our footage in, for example, and we could also adjust the X axis and Y axis position of the footage to our liking. This is a cool feature. I know I'm going to use a lot myself to spice up my videos when I have to use text on screen here and there. One feature I'm loving is that we can now easily sync audio right in the timeline. So I have this footage here with camera audio and I also have external audio. To sync it, you wanna make sure that these two different audio waveforms are not on the same track. So we'll move the external audio onto the A2 track. Next thing you're gonna do is select both the footage and the external audio that you wanna sync, right click on it choose auto align clips and we're going to choose based on waveform so that DaVinci takes both of the audio files that we have selected and moves them into place accordingly. And there you go. Just like that, our audio is now synced. Let's have a listen. 256 gig. SD super cards. fast SD cards. Yeah. Awesome. So being able to sync audio so quickly is definitely going to speed up your editing workflow. Another new feature is let's say you want to see the metadata that accompanies any of these clips. What you can do is go up to the top of your screen and click on this icon that is the metadata view. 
doing that. We'll show you more information as well as the thumbnail. So it's a good feature if you like seeing additional info about your footage. Personally, I don't like seeing the metadata, so I'm gonna click back on the thumbnail grid and drag this panel back over. So another feature that DaVinci has updated is they've made it a lot easier and more efficient to adjust and control the speed of a clip. Okay, I've got this clip of Will here with it selected in the inspector panel. We can adjust the speed by clicking on speed change and where it says speed percentage, we can drag this slider to the left to slow our clip down or to the right to speed it up. You can also click in here and just type the number in. So now this clip is double the speed. Another thing we can do really easily in this speed change panel is reverse the speed of the clip by clicking on this arrow icon here. And this snowflake icon allows you to freeze frame wherever your cursor is within your clip. So this speed change panel is super convenient and I'm really glad DaVinci's made it this much easier to adjust the speed of our footage. Let's pop over to the Fusion workspace and if you can't see the keyframes panel, click on keyframes up here and here it is. So we can now see audio in Fusion. This is awesome if you have an effect that needs to work with the beat in music or come in at a certain point in the audio. And over on the left side where it says media in, click on the drop down menu and we can now see the left audio and the right audio. And another awesome thing that we can do in Fusion is customize our toolbar. We can do this by right clicking on it, choosing customize, create toolbar. You can name it, I'll name mine Alley. And by default, you have all the effects already on the toolbar. So if you wanna remove ones that you don't use, like let's say for example, we wanna remove this background effect, you can right click, go to customize and remove group and that background effect is no longer on our toolbar. If we want to add specific effects that weren't in our toolbar, we could click on effect library and drag whichever effect we want onto our toolbar. So I'll drag blur on, and that's how you customize your Fusion toolbar. And there you go. Those are my top favorite new features and updates in DaVinci Resolve 17's beta free version. Now there is one new feature I did leave out of this video because I think it deserves an entire video on its own and that is the color warper. It really takes your color grading game to the next level. If it's something that you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below and if enough people want to see a video about how to use it, I will make that video. Thanks for checking this video out. We release weekly videos all about filmmaking and gear reviews so if you're into that sort of thing subscribe and I will see you in another video.